Okay, everybody, uh, it is coming up on week three, day two, and we're continuing the discussion of turning circles. We went through a lot of stuff. Uh, we had talked about the pivot point and how that describes the uh, shape of the turning circle. We had then looked at some vessels that they were turning. We could imagine that the turning, the pivot point rather, the pivot point was right here. And uh, we saw how the stern is kicking out and the bow is kicking inside the turning circle. And that's what we had talked about here, the bow, everything forward of the pivot point as compared to everything after the pivot point. There's a buildup of positive pressure along the outside of the turn of the hull. And I made some com comparisons to uh, snow skiing or uh, water skiing or different types of activities that we may have been familiar with. We had a different view of another ship. We think about where the pivot point probably was and we get a pretty clear image there. We talked about sweeping a lee so that uh, that was something that we would do to knock down the waves, a particular going in this case to starboard so that the starboard side was a little bit smoother water. You can see it's almost sort of a greasy looking water there, smooth. We've knocked down some of the seas, make it a little bit better. It also slows the ship down so when the pilot comes on board. And some of you may be familiar with that. It's all about drift angle. It's all about this one, which is the heading. And this is the direction. I'm not gonna say course made good, but I'm gonna say at any moment in time, this is the direction made good. You know, that whole concept of uh, heading and, and the direction that the pivot point is traveling any time uh, through the turn is kind of, that's what with those two directions there and there, heading and the direction that the pivot point is traveling at any moment in time, that would become what we would have to call, you know, that's the drift angle. And so we're going to be able to measure. So I'm holding my fingers up like this, where this is the, uh, this one is the heading and this one is the direction that the pivot point and that distance in between them, that angular component in between, that's the thing that we're talking about for drift angle. Let's go back to that diagram. And so that's the drift angle there. I want you to watch this uh, short little segment of a video which will come up it should load uh, just momentarily and this is a shot skidding into a channel and this comes from the because uh, comes from the ship handling school that I was at and this was a uh, this is about a 80 to 90 degree course change into a uh, scale channel uh, there's no room for error if you go outside the buoys and they've marked it with a yellow line here but just, I'm gonna let this play. It's about uh, 20 or 30 seconds long and just let it play. And you see, you have a sense of that vessel. Now, the interesting thing about this, by the way, is that everything is scale except time. Everything is perfectly scaled. Every aspect of the, of the man model training, except for time. Time is five times as fast as real life. That's what it feels like. And so we get to exaggerate some stuff, but we see how we skid it into that turn. I'm gonna go back and now we're gonna steady up, but I wanna go back into it and just play it again. And you'll see as the pivot point, now watch carefully and imagine where the pivot point is right here along and my, and the turn starts, we're at aggressive about 20 degrees to starboard, maybe even increasing to uh, 25 to starboard. Look at that, look at that skid through the turn. Vessel slows down probably about 25% of it loses its headway. The stern swings wide out. Look at the drift angle, which has been created. But at this point, we're going to try to steady up. You'll see a little burst of power there. You see the wake from the, uh, the little burst of power on the engine. That little kick ahead that we read about in chapter two. So it's kind of interesting to have that to be able to look at. All right, so drift angle. And you're right. Uh, somehow you don't expect that that's the end of it. You suspect the Captain Teal is going to keep talking about this drift angle thing, and I am, I'm gonna keep talking about it. So I got a question for you. And this question has to do with, uh, uh, we got two vessels. One is, uh, they're both 400 feet length of the waterline. One vessel has a 60 foot beam and the other one is double that, it's a 120 foot beam. And I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you this question and, and give me an honest answer at some point. I'll ask for that maybe in the discussions. That'll be discussion question number one. What was your initial response to that question I just asked you? 
as if you were sitting in class and you could put up either your left hand or the right hand and you would say to me, yep, the smaller one is going to have a smaller turning circle or the fatter one, the beamier one, is going to have a smaller turning circle. And I bet you have an intuitive answer. That was the first thing. And I, I want you to share that openly so that everybody can see, put your cards on the table, what you thought. I'll tell you what I thought when it, when it's all over, because I had that initial thought as well. And I'll tell you what my initial thoughts were. It's an interesting. So we're going to pause a little bit, let you kind of think about that, because the answer is coming up on the next slide. So remember, I'm asking you for your initial thought, which is going to be able to achieve the smaller turning circle. This is me thinking about that. Mm -hmm. But I will commit. Hmm. Ba -bum -bum. Well, here's the answer. The skinnier vessel with the less the, the, the less beam is actually going to turn wider. It's going to have a larger turning circle, a wider turn. The beamier vessel, the wider vessel, the wider vessel, I didn't say wider turn, I said the, the beamier vessel will actually, with everything else being the same, rudder, propeller, every aspect is exactly the same. The beamier vessel will have a smaller turn. Interesting stuff. We also see here something called LB ratio. 600 divided by 60, that's the beam. That's an LB length breadth ratio of 10. And here we have a length breadth ratio of six. Smaller the length breadth ratio is, smaller the turn of that ship will be. Hmm. All right, interesting stuff. I can talk a little bit about why that is. So here we've got the skinny vessel, we've got the fat vessel. And I'm going to take my tape measure. Let's say that these are all, they're, they're all about 600 feet long. Let's say that um, I put my tape measure on this vessel and I go right here and I measure all the way right around to the very stem. I come up with a number like a hundred and from the a beam of the pivot point, 150 feet. From here, measured all the way along. And this one, I do the same. And I start with my tape measure right there, perfectly a beam of the pivot point. And I come all the way around to the stem. It comes out to be 185 feet. That's because there's more steel on this one, as I scribe around here, than there is on this one. That's because this one has a larger beam. It took more plates of steel to make that than it took this. There's more surface area here than there is here. After the pivot point, the hull is the same. It, there is no difference. It has draft and length. It's just a, a line of steel. So this positive pressure here, I'm gonna just put two positive pressure points indicating that they're the same. But on this one, because there's more steel from here to here, we end up with a greater positive pressure for the pivot point. And that's what allows the ship to develop a greater drift angle. Now, now be careful here. Now, not to be careful, but think about this. I said it can develop a greater drift angle. There's that drift angle of 19. Because it develops a greater drift angle, it can have a smaller turn. So on a test question, just don't tell me fat vessel turns better, quicker. Those wouldn't be the right words. You, if, if you're going to go down that road, you'd have to say fat vessel turns a smaller turn. Beamier, let's use the right words though. Beamier vessel will turn a smaller tactical diameter, also a smaller final diameter as well. Hmm. You know, those questions, if you were to be asked that question on an exam about turning circles, you would be inclined to use words like smaller, larger, faster, slower, quicker, tighter, all those words. You can make up other ones yourself. What I want to ask you is, what I want to ask you is, do they all mean the same thing?
Does smaller mean the same as faster? Does smaller mean the same as tighter? Does smaller mean the same as quicker? Does larger mean slower? Be very, very careful when you answer your questions. Learn to learn to craft your answers, your written word, very, very carefully. I asked you the second bullet, do they all mean the same thing or could they be misinterpreted? Misinterpreted by me? Yeah, that's part of it. But what about what about if you were writing a, um, a, a, a report of an incident which happened aboard your vessel? You were, you were trying to convey in words back to the home office of why the vessel that you were on suffered a quarter of a million dollars worth of damage during a, a, a turn maneuver in a basin or in a channel. You'd want to make damn sure that you were using the right words. So I'll leave that thought with you. Make darn sure that you're using the right words. Going on to the next subject, I want to talk about something called the um, pilot card. Pilot card is something which is given to the ship pilot when the ship pilot comes on board. He or she, in that capacity of a pilot, they are given the pilot card and they have immediate information. It's, it, yeah, it might be stuck under glass somewhere. That's something else. This one is handed to them. It has the name of the ship, the call sign, the displacement, the air draft, and the water drafts. And by the, by the way, you know, day to day, those drafts will change as you load cargo, as you burn off fuel. Things like the particulars, the length, the breadth, the type of ground tackle, those things don't change. The graphic images that go along with the dimensions don't change. Steering isn't going to change. Uh, control aspects, the type of the rudder. Is it a spade type? Is it a semi-balanced? So on and so forth. How much time from hard over to hard over? What's the rudder, a max rudder angle? Is there thrusters? How many thrusters are there? What's the horsepower on the thrusters? Stopping times and distances. Turning, advance and transfer. Tactical and final diameter, things like that. This would all be given on the pilot card. Engine speeds, horsepower or KW, number of propellers. What the, what's the time from full head to full astern? What, what's the relationship between RPM and pitch, if it's controllable pitch propeller? Controllable variable pitch propeller. You could use either words. All those things would come into play. There is a, another card called the bridge poster. This is not necessarily given to the pilot, but this is under glass. This, this one uh, is a sample that comes from the simulator. This one goes into greater detail that the ship's crew might want to be truly more interested in. Not that the pilot wouldn't be. Things like squat and heel effect, we'll learn about those. Turning diagrams for deep water and shallow water and how that differs. Emergency maneuvers for deep water, emergency stops, so on and so forth. Spe a ship-specific Williamson turn, man overboard data. It isn't, a Williamson turn is a great thing. There are different types of turn, the Sharnow turn, the, round turn, the racetrack turn, but most of us know the Williamson turn. The Williamson turn needs to be ship specific. It needs to be fine tuned. It's not always the same for every ship and you learn the best way to do it. And that would be recorded on the uh, bridge poster. Another interesting diagram. Uh, here is the USNS Tanner. Before it was the state of Maine, it it was the same hull, it was the same rudder, different propeller, different engine. And it really doesn't matter about the engine, it mostly matters about the propeller. And so we see on this data sheet here, we have advanced transfer, tactical and final diameter and true to form, final is less than tactical. Look at the tactical diameter, by the way, 1,575 feet. You initiate the turn here and you go 180 degrees. That is the tactical diameter as, as uh, done. I, I, was a, I wasn't aboard when we did it for the Tanner, obviously, but I was aboard when we did the same thing for the state of Maine uh, as it came out of the shipyard years ago. By the way, th this turn was executed with a left rudder. It's written down here, a left rudder of 37 degrees. So that's the type of data that we've been talking about and how that how that becomes useful. Let me go a little bit further. You should be thinking about turning circles and the size of a turning circle for whatever boat you're working on. If you're working on a 50 boat, 
you know, you know, uh, a whale watching, uh, you know, vessel. And by the way, I was the captain of a whale watching vessel down. I think I told you some of this. I, I was a captain of a 50 foot whale watching vessel. I was 22, 23 years old, fresh out of the academy. Because I had a third mate's license, I had a hundred ton captain, and that was a that was a good license to run that boat. So I had to maneuver it in very, very tight places. I told you a couple of you about that story. Or, or maybe you're on a thousand footer, but here's the rule. The turning circle, let's just say tactical diameter, is going to be about four ship lengths. If it's four ship lengths and you're a 50 foot vessel, or if it's four ship lengths and you're a thousand foot vessel, four times 50, that's a 200 foot circle, four times a thousand for a larger ship, that's a 4,000 foot circle. That's a good rule of thumb. And just having said that, the tanner broke that rule because the tanner, because of the shape of the hull, it is even smaller than that. You look at this circle here, it's roughly the tactical diameter is 1,500 feet, 1,575, but just call it 1,500. This, the tanner, let's just think about the length overall, not even the length of the waterline. It, it's about five, about 500 feet, five times three. So the length of the ship, it's about, in the tanner, it's not much difference on the state of Maine, but you know, we could talk about that too. But a good rule of thought, a good place to start is, and you can fine tune this by experimentation on your own vessel. This is a constant rate turn, constant rudder. It's not changing it, it's not accelerating, it's none of those things. It's just a constant rate turn, holding the rudder and holding the rudder speed. And every ship handler should know, those are actually called uh, master's trials. When the master of the vessel, captain of the vessel, determines some of those handling characteristics, uh, sort of seaman's eye, first-hand information. It's good to look at the data here, but it's also good to look at it yourself. Now here's the TSOM turning circles. Now they're a little bit different. So here's the second dis uh, discussion question that's gonna be coming up. The first one was about what did you expect to have the smaller turning circle, the fat or the skinny vessel, that was number one. This one is gonna be uh, related to the TSOM, and I'm gonna to have to share this, this document with you so that you can get a better look at it and expand it, I'll share it on Canvas as a, uh, in the module. What I want you to do is, uh, in preparation as you think about this, say to yourself, which way does the shaft turn on the state of Maine? You need to know that. Is, are we, is, is the state of Maine a left-hand turning shaft or a right-hand turning shaft? And if it's left-hand turning shaft, obviously the propeller is going the same way. And then I want you to say to yourself, what about if when you're going ahead in the stern? So is it left or right-hand turning when you're moving ahead, and then what happens when you go astern? Now, that's a trick question, watch out here. Talk amongst yourself, you don't have to do this in the blind, you can do this uh, with each other. I'll, I'll answer part of that question for you right here to get you going. These were pictures that were taken in the, in the shipyard down in Boston a few years ago on the Tanner. And this is a true picture, I am facing the, the rudder, we're taking, <laughs> I can't speak. I've taken, we, we've, or the shipyard has taken three of the blades off. Those blades would have been attached here, here, and around here. It's actually a four-bladed propeller. This is called a skewed propeller. This shape is a, it's a, it's aggressive in one direction. And you can see it turns, what I'm telling you here, it is a left-hand turning shaft and, and a left-hand turning propeller. Left-hand turning shaft propeller every day, all day. This is a controllable pitch propeller. It is always left-handed. We never change the rotation of that shaft, that propeller. So what does that do, do to turning circles? You should know, and you should be thinking about this, and this is what I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you that, you know, here's some of the questions that we could have as our discussions. And you know, if we have a discussion about it on Canvas, those become the same things, that's like a practice quiz. I'll ask you to answer that, those questions on, on a, an upcoming quiz. What is the, re here's the first answer. What is the direction of rotations of the TSOM's propeller? I just gave it to you, left-hand turning. Next question, does the TSOM back to port or to starboard? And what's going on there? So you tell me that. Does the TSOM back to port or does it back to starboard? Think about that. Then, 
next set over here. The TSOM does a port and then a starboard turn for the sake of comparison. There is no wind, no current. Rudder angle and speed are the same for each trial turn. Is the turning tactical diameter for both turns the same or is it different? It's the TSOM. Do comparative turns, one to port, one to starboard. Is the tactical diameter for both turns the same or different? How would you explain that one turn is different than the other turn, or how would you explain that they are the same? So there's some interesting questions that I'm putting out to you, and that's your homework. I'm really having I got a very, very short lecture. It's only, it's coming up on uh, 21 minutes here. I'll put myself back on the screen as I, as I close down here. So we're in the kitchen, it's evening. I'm looking over at 7.53. I have not had dinner yet, and, uh, the dog is looking at me over there in the corner and my wife's not even here tonight. She's off doing something else. And so I get to uh, publish this tonight and, and push this out. I, I might, you might not see it till Wednesday, of course, but um, so very good. Uh, that was week three, day two, more about turning circles. And I got some discussions, uh, questions in there that I'll get into Canvas. Uh, very good. Talk to you later. Roger that.